and welcome to Science is the Bomb with Mrs. Holderbaum. Remember, scientists like to explore, they like to ask questions, they like to observe things and look at things and wonder why things happen. And today for science, we are going to be learning some things about the science of snowflakes. First, we're going to start out by listening to a story called Snowflake Bentley. And this is a story about a person who was super interested in snowflakes and wondered, wondered about them and asked questions about them. And he loved to take pictures of snowflakes. So first, we're going to listen to the story. And then when the story's over, we're going to learn how to build some snowflakes using your creativity. So let me aim my camera down, and let's listen up to the story, Snowflake Bentley. Snowflake Bentley. In the days when farmers worked with an ox and sled and cut the dark with lantern light, there lived a boy who loved snow more than anything else in the world. Willie Bentley's happiest days were snowstorm days. He watched snowflakes fall on his mittens on the dry grass of Vermont farm fields. On the dark metal handle of the barn door, he said snow was as beautiful as butterflies or apple blossoms. Over here it gives us a little bit of information about Snowflake Bentley. Wilson Bentley was born February 9, 1865 on a farm in Jericho, Vermont between Lake Champlain and Mount Mansfield in the heart of the snow belt where the annual snowfall is about 120 inches. He could net butterflies and show them to his older brother, Charlie. He could pick apple blossoms and take them to his mother, but he could not share snowflakes because he could not save them. Willie's mother was his teacher until he was 14 years old. He attended school only for a few years. She had a set of encyclopedias, Willie said. I read them all. One way that you can get smarter is by reading. <laughs> when his mother gave him an old microscope, he used it to look at flowers, raindrops, and blades of grass. Best of all, he used it to look at snow. While other children built forts and pelted snowballs at roosting crows, Willie was catching single snowflakes. Day after stormy day, he studied the icy crystals. A microscope is a kind of tool that scientists use to make things look like they're very up close. So he got a microscope to look at his snowflakes with. From his boyhood on, he studied all forms of moisture. He kept a record of the weather and did many experiments with raindrops. Here he is using his microscope. See, this is the microscope. You look through this, and whatever you put down here appears to be closer when you look through the microscope. It says... Their intricate patterns were even more beautiful than he had imagined. He expected to find whole flakes that were the same, that were copies of each other, but he never did. Willie decided he must find a way to save snowflakes so others could see their wonderful designs. For three winters, he tried drawing snow crystals. They always melted before he could finish. This says, he learned that most crystals had six branches, though a few had three. For each snowflake, the six branches were alike. That means they were the same. I found that snowflakes were masterpieces of design, he said. No one design was ever repeated when a snowflake melted. Just that much beauty was gone without leaving any record behind. Starting at age 15, he drew a hundred snow crystals each winter for three winters. So he would observe them. So this is something that scientists do. They look at things to observe them. And sometimes they draw pictures 
of what they find. When he was 16, Willie read of a camera with its own microscope. If I had that camera, I could photograph snowflakes, he told his mother. Willie's mother knew he would not be happy until he could share what he had seen. Fussing with snow is just foolishness, his father said. Still, he loved his son. When Willie was 17, his parents spent their savings and bought the camera. So they buy him a, a microscope that can take pictures too. The camera made images on large glass negatives. Its microscope could magnify a tiny crystal from 64 to 3,600 times its actual size. That means that even though the snowflake is really teeny tiny, the camera can zoom in on it so that it looks like it's bigger. It was taller than a newborn calf and cost as much as, as his father's herd of 10 cows. Willie was sure it was the best of all cameras. So he's really excited about his camera. A long time ago, they didn't have iPhones that took pictures and smartphones and computers like we do now. He had to buy this to take his pictures. Even so, his first pictures were failures. No better than shadows, yet he would not quit. That reminds me of our word of the week, optimism. He, 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 will, he doesn't quit. Mistake by mistake, snowflake by snowflake, Willie worked through every storm. Winter ended, the snow melted, and he had no good pictures. He waited for another season of snow. One day, in the second winter, he tried a new experiment, and it worked. Willie had figured out how to photograph snowflakes. Now everyone can see the great beauty in a tiny crystal, he said. So he didn't give up. He kept on trying until he got what he was trying for. Willie's experiment. He used a very small lens opening, which let only a little light reach the negative. But he kept the lens open for several seconds, up to a minute and a half. He learned, too, that he could make the snow crystals show up more clearly by using a sharp knife to cut away all the dark parts of the negative around the crystals. This etching meant extra hours of work for each photograph, but Willie didn't mind. Sometimes if you love what you're doing, you don't mind doing the extra work. But in those days, no one cared. Neighbors laughed at the idea of photography photographing snow. Snow in Vermont is as common as dirt, they said. We don't need pictures. Willie said the photographs would be his gift to the world. While other farmers sat by the fire or rode to town with horse and sleigh, Willie studied snowstorms. He stood at the shed door and held out a black tray to catch the flakes. There he is trying to catch the snowflakes. He learned that each snowflake begins as a tiny speck, much too tiny to be seen. Little bits, molecules of water, attach to the speck to form its branches. As the crystal grows, the branches come together and trap quantities of air. Many things affect the way these crystal branches grow. A little more cold, a bit less wind, or a bit more moisture will mean different shaped branches. Willie said, that was why, in all his pictures, he never found two snowflakes alike. The branches of the snowflakes are the parts that stick out from around the center. And he always found that every single one was a little bit different. And that they had six, six sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. But on each of the six sides, it always looked a little bit different. When he found... When he found only jumbled broken crystals, he brushed the tray clean with a turkey feather and hauled it out again. He waited hours for just the right crystal and didn't notice the cold. If the shed were warm, the snow would melt. If he breathed on the black tray, the snow would melt. If he twitched a muscle as he held the snow crystal on the long wooden pick, the snowflake would break. He had to work fast or the snowflake would evaporate before he could slide it into place and take its picture. Some winters he was able to make only a few dozen good pictures. Some winters he made hundreds. 
the best snowstorm of his life occurred on Valentine's Day in 1928. He made over 100 photographs during the 22-day storm. Or, I'm sorry, during the two-day storm. He called the storm a gift from King Winter. <laughs> Willie loved the beauty of nature. He took pictures in all seasons. In the summer, his nieces and nephews rubbed coat hangers with sticky pitch from spruce trees. Then Willie could use them to pick up spider webs with jeweled, wa jeweled with water drops and take their pictures. On fall nights, he would gently tie a grasshopper to a flower so he could find it in the morning and photograph the dew-covered insect. <laughs> he tied a grasshopper on so that in the morning he could take pictures of it. Willie's nieces and nephews lived on one side of the farmhouse that Willie shared with his brother Charlie. Willie often played the piano as they sang and shared stories and games with them. But his snow crystal pictures were, were always his favorite. He gave copies away or sold them for a few cents. He made special pictures as gifts for birthdays. He held everything. He held evening slideshows on the lawns of his friends. Children and adults sat on the grass and watched while Willie projected his slides onto a sheet hung over a clothesline. It's like watching. It's like they're watching a movie of all of his really cool snowflake pictures. Many colleges and universities bought lantern slide copies of his photographs and add it to their collections each year. Artists and designers use the photographs to inspire their own work. Even today, those who want to learn about snow crystals begin with Wilson Bentley's book, Snow Crystals. He wrote about snow and published his pictures in magazines. He gave speeches about snow to faraway scholars and neighborhood sky watchers. You are doing a great work, said a professor from Wisconsin. The little farmer came to be known as the world's expert on snow, the snowflake man. So that was his nickname. But he never grew rich. He spent every penny on his pictures. Willie said, there were treasures in snow. I can't afford to miss a single snowstorm, he told a friend. I never know when I will find some wonderful prize. Other scientists raised money so Willie could gather his best photographs in a book. When he was 62 years old, Willie's book, His Gift to the World, was published. Still, he was not ready to quit. So he wrote a book about his snow crystals. In 1926, he had spent $15,000 on his work and received $4,000 from the sale of photographs and slides. Less than a month after turning the first page on his book, Willie walked six miles home in a blizzard to make more pictures. He became ill with pneumonia after the walk and he died two weeks later. A monument was built for Willie in the center of town, like a little sign to remember him. The girls and boys who had been his neighbors grew up and told their sons and daughters the story of the man who loved snow. Forty-two years after Wilson Butley's death, children in his village worked to set up a museum in honor of the farmer scientist. And his book had taken the delicate snow crystals that that once blew across Vermont, past mountains, over the earth. Neighbors and strangers have come to know the icy wonders that land on their own mittens, thanks to Snowflake Bentley. The plaque right here, the monument to remember Snowflake Bentley, says this. Snowflake Bentley, Jericho's world-famous snowflake authority. For 50 years, Wilson A. Bentley, a simple farmer, developed his technique of microphotography to reveal to the world the grandeur and mystery of the snowflake, its universal hexagonal shape, and its infinite number of lovely designs. And here on the last page, there's a picture of Snowflake Bentley and his real camera. And if you take a look down here, 
here are some of the real pictures that Snowflake Bentley took with his microscope camera. And if you look closely at those snowflakes, you'll notice that each one of them has six sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. They all have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All the way around. But each section has different designs on it, but notice they all match. It means it's symmetrical. Like, see, if this one has little ice pieces sticking out, then they all do. If this one is kind of shaped like this, look, they're all shaped like that. It's symmetrical. It's the same all the way around. So what we're going to do today now for your science is you're going to be making a hexagon-shaped snowflake using some Q-tips. I got out 12 Q-tips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So, I'm going to start by making, I want to make six, six sides. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six. All snowflakes have six sides. Try to space them out so they're kind of got an equal amount of space in between each one. Okay? Now, now that we have six sides to our snowflake, this is a hexagon shape. Now, we can use the other two tips to make a design. Now, I'm just going to lay some down. So I could, if I put one here, 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 and here. Look at that. I could make a snowflake like that. That's one idea. You can see the hexagon with six sides. There's one idea for my snowflake. So I'm going to take these off. Maybe I could do something different. Hmm. I know. I could move these and put them at the end instead. Like this. Here's another idea for a snowflake. Okay. You have to make them all the same all the way around no matter what you do. Okay. Here's another idea I had to make some neat designs. I could, I could break these in half, or maybe I could even just bend it. Let's see. And I could put a design like this. See that? So there's another idea for making a snowflake. Okay. It still has six, six sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. Each of these sections is symmetrical. This, this section looks just like this section. I feel like they kind of look like letter Y's, don't they? All right, maybe you could do something else. Remember, you always keep six in the middle. Maybe you could break that right, maybe you could break that right in half. I have another idea. What if I put, let's see. What if I put, I could move it down like this. That might look kind of cool. So I could break them in half. Go like that. So I could go all the way around. Now what you can do is, you can take a, make a snowflake and take a picture of it to submit for your assignment. You don't have to glue it down. You can just move the pieces around to build your snowflake. But if you want to, you could glue it down. It's up to you. Alright? So you could do that. There's probably other ideas that you could do besides the ones that I showed you. Okay? So do your best experimenting. And remember that scientists like to explore, they like to ask questions, they like to try new things. So I want you to try some new things with building your snowflake. And maybe the next time it snows, see if you can catch a few snowflakes on your mitten as they're falling and take a look at it and see, does it have six sides? Can you find two that look the same? Have fun and thanks for watching. Science is the bomb with Mrs. Holderbaum.